Welcome back to Kin in Line. This I make part 80. Um, so I'm in Port Elizabeth working on the Evening Post as a reporter. And for the first couple of months in, from about August 84, when I started there, they sent me to the courts, which I dreaded because I'd never enjoyed, I'd, I'd worked briefly on the Daily Dispatch in 75, straight out of school. And they sent me to courts there and I didn't enjoy it. But, you know, one had to do it and I went through it. And part of the beauty of it was that there was a lot of time wasted waiting for cases to start, etc. So I managed to sketch quite a lot and this was in the, on the back inside of the cover of my notebook. So I often did drawings there and I think I've got these two women in the in the gallery as it were quite nicely done. So yeah, and then the this new law courts in Port Elizabeth weren't that new in this eighty four, they were already about sixty years old, I think. And smoke filled, grubby Real terrible place, and uh, so anyway, this this was one of the people waiting to go into court or, or waiting for someone. But as you'll notice, he's sitting on a bench, but he's actually got no legs at all. So those big, powerful arms of his, he used to help himself up onto the bench. I don't know. He seemed to walk on his hands. It was incredible. King Hackley, that would have been October eighty four. So this was probably one of the court orderlies, even though it was apartheid. I mean, people. A lot of the cops were black, um, and obviously the interpreters, they were always well-dressed interpreters. Uh, that's interesting. Evening Post transport card, Ralph Jarvis. So when we, if you needed a taxi, then you used that. Fortunately, I had my own transport. So I think this would be one of the interpreters. He looks well dressed with a collar and tie. Um, yeah, and they were quite. This guy, I can't tell what he was, but. Uh, again, an interesting character. He certainly saw the real people of the world, you know, not the wealthy and the up, up market. So this could have been a cop or maybe an accused. As you came into the courtroom, they would say, uh, the orderly would shout, stand, stand in, stand in court, stand in the hof, Pagumani, or some such thing, in Kosa. And it was such a ritual, you know. Look at this guy, he must be a cop. I saw so many oaks like this in the army. If I ran out of Inside covers of uh, my notebooks, and I just used the actual lined paper. It's quite a nice drawing, too. Kind of looks like a real magistrate. Eh?
this I kind of see him as having been a cop just has that look about him trying to get his oh there we go These are some probably quite treasured drawings because, you know, not many people will have this sort of record. So this is probably another cop. If you ever wanted to look like a criminal, this guy does. I think this was a magistrate as well. Back then, of course, there were no black magistrates, it was all whites. Very different today. Kind of think this was a city councillor. I can't remember his name. I think he's a guy who collected old vintage cars. And the National Party stalwart. This looks like old Fricky Kotze again, who we saw in a previous video. A councillor with a very distinctive profile. This I kept for just this little sketch. See if we can focus in on it. And who this was, I cannot recall. So interesting to think that these are all individuals who, who would have led long lives up until this point and continued after I'd drawn them, but who were they? Look at this wonderful exaggeration with these large legs in the foreground and then this quaint face in the back. Really like this one. I have no idea who this was. Again, it's just a moment in time.
Okay. Serious looking is uh African face. Amazing how much you can tell from that that stare. What sort of suffering has she been through? Hmm. I'll leave on this note. Well, I had to do some artwork for them for some if they wanted to have a forum or something. I think it might have been used on the letters page. Not sure if this is the one they used, but so I had to do a few designs, and they seem to be a couple of them. I may as well just since uh, Shane Warner's has just died tragically at 52. I did this little cartoon during the 80s when um, what you call it. Uh, Rebel Tours came out to South Africa and they were paying these Australians and New Zealanders, uh, English and even West Indian players a fortune. So here we've got South Africa versus the Aussies. And he's saying, wait, Cobble, wait. He doesn't want to go for the run. And the chap here says, stealing a single is hardly worth it. When you're earning what they are. So it's a bit of a pun on stealing a single. Yeah, probably would have enjoyed being a cartoonist. But um, I don't know if I could have come up with something clever every day, frankly. And yeah, I've got another oh, couple here. Let's get through these. So mentioned earlier that Alan Hendrickson was the Labour Party leader and he lived in Newton Hagel in a coloured township at the time. And I'm telling you, we in the Labour Party are glad not to be the ones being detained anymore. We've had our turn. Fighting apartheid from within. So yeah, these chaps feathered their nests, I'm afraid. They got in to Parliament, may earn a good salary as MPs and yeah, essentially turned their back on the struggle, although Hendrix had, did swim at the Whites on the Kings Beach and that made a big thing, big news story. So here we have P.W. Werther talking for Tambo, he was in the, the height of his powers here. You see, what Tambo really means is this, uh, the ANC uh, exiled leader out of a Tambo, who I think was based in London. He obviously, him and PW, look at these hands here. They were poles apart at this time. Anyway, I think we'll leave on the note of Pia Vier in full flow, stem nut, then, yeah, so cheers for now.